Hi, my name is David Buer, a product manager with Leviton Manufacturing. Today we're going to talk about Leviton's wireless DMX product line and show you how to connect a DMX transmitter to a dimmer pack. For our DMX transmitter today, we're going to use a Leviton 7000 series console. Uh, what we're going to show you today will work with the 7000 series, it'll work with an 8700, it'll work with any transmitting device. What's important is that it speaks DMX. We're going to be using that DMX signal coming out of our console to go to a Leviton wireless DMX CRMX transmitter, which is going to transmit that signal wirelessly over to a receiver, which is going to output it DMX to the input of a Leviton D4 DMX dimmer pack. Like I said, what's on the transmitting side and what's on the receiving side really doesn't matter. What's important is that we're transmitting that signal wirelessly. I'm going to show you how to make the common connections, how to program the devices, and how to watch it work. The first step in setting up a system is connecting our DMX transmitting device to our wireless DMX transmitter. Now you can quickly identify that this wireless device is a transmitter because you can see TX on the front. That's in contrast to the receiver that we'll see in a few minutes, which says RX on the front. Now, the connections on the transmitter are very simple. We have on the back panel a DMX input receptacle, a line voltage power input receptacle, and a low voltage power input receptacle. Whether you power this device from the line or the low voltage signal doesn't matter. It just needs to have power and of course it's got to have lighting control data coming in the DMX input. On the front panel we have our LEDs which tell us whether or not we have power and what's going on with the wireless and the lighting control DMX signal. So we're going to make our first connection. We're going to connect power. We're going to use the line voltage power input which gives this device power. We'll notice on the front when we do that we see the blue power LED light up. That LED lit solid is the normal condition. The second connection is going to be data. We're taking a standard 5 pin DMX cable, connecting it to the DMX output of the console, and connecting it to the input of our transmitter. Now we've got the connection part of our, the transmitting side of our system complete. Now we're going to move over to the receiver side. Now we're going to set up the receiver side of our system. Much like the transmitter, the receiving device requires power. We're going to connect the power connection. It also needs to transmit the data somewhere. In this application, we're going to transmit DMX data out of the receiver into a D4 DMX dimmer pack. For purposes of illustration, I'm just going to have four simulated lighting loads here. These are just standard 40 watt light bulbs. Four are uh, representing four channels. Much like on the transmitter, our power LED has turned on. Now, we're not transmitting any data yet. In fact, the receiver's not paired to any transmitters. If they were, we'd see these RF lights lit up. So I'm going to show you now how to pair a transmitter to a receiver. All right, we've rearranged the product with the transmitter on the left and the receiver on the right. I'm going to show you how to pair, in this case, all receivers to the transmitter. To do that, you simply push the button on the, the transmitter. You'll see the RF light is blinking. It's going out and searching for all receivers out on the network which are not already paired to part of the system. You'll notice now that the receiver has been found. It's showing us a signal strength meter, showing the RF link, the top LED, that it's paired to a transmitter, and that it's outputting DMX. We'll notice on the transmitter, on the left side, the RF link is lit up, telling us that it's transmitting data, and the DMX light is lit up, telling us that it's receiving data. So at this point in time, we have a complete working system. Now that we've connected our transmitter to our receiver, we have a complete working system. And we'll, you'll notice that I can run channel levels on my console and see the dimmer pack respond. Now in this application, I have a single dimmer pack with only four channels. In most of your applications, you're going to have a lot more dimmers. And in fact, maybe multiple receivers, multiple transmitters, and even multiple universes of data running simultaneously. 
It's all the same programming method I just showed you, where you push the power or the link button on the transmitter to find any unpaired receivers. If there's receivers that you don't want to pair, either unpower them, or after you've taught them, you can tell any receiver to forget who it's paired to by simply pushing and holding the learn button for about three seconds. The LEDs will flash at you and it'll unlink itself from the transmitter. Another programming hint, if you want to unlink all receivers in the system, push and hold the learn button on the transmitter for three seconds. The LEDs will blink at you and it's telling you that it's now telling all receivers out there to forget who they're paired to. Of course, to pair to all unpaired receivers, push and hold the learn button. It'll go find any unmatched receivers and link itself up. If you forget the programming instructions, refer to the bottom of the unit where all programming instructions are right on the bottom for easy reference. So you don't even need to carry your manual around. Today I've showed you how to configure a transmitter and a receiver in the wireless line. I've been using our indoor transmitter product and our indoor receiver products. There's other products in the line. We also have an IP rated outdoor unit, both transmitters and receivers. We also have cards that can be installed, our installed inside our Piccolo series of console, which makes the console itself uh, a wireless transmitting device. As always, thanks for your time.